Hey everyone, it's Laura Laws and today's video is about language development and I would have never thought to do this video. I'm a first time mom and Landon is 20 and a half months. But um, recently I've had a lot of people on Instagram ask me to do this video and I am in no way an expert. I have an accounting degree, I did accounting, I worked for my parents' construction company and then I sold real estate. English was my worst language throughout school. I am not an expert, but I am a stay-at-home mom. We did attachment parenting for the most part, so she's been with me pretty much all the time. So you just, as a stay-at-home mom or moms in general, you know, there's a lot of intuitiveness that comes with teaching your child. What I have learned about child development is that they will go at their own pace and like for instance Landon excelled at language development I think so recently I looked into it because I, re I was getting a lot of comments in person and also online and um, I read that 18 months on is when a language explosion typically happens and hers happened about 15 months and then she didn't walk though until she was 17 months old so that just is to put into perspective that you never know, um, you know, what your child is going to excel at and at what point in their development are they going to be better at walking, gross motor skills, fine motor skills, language, things like that. So like I said, my daughter Landon is 20 months old and she is... I don't know how many words she knows. I asked my husband when he thought, and he's like, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of words. I have no idea. She repeats things new every day. Um, she's just, um, I mean, I don't, I don't even know. Like, how do you count past 200? She's definitely over 200 words. She says sentences. She sings the full ABCs. Um, she can identify, I think, every letter in the alphabet. She um, counts to 20. Sometimes she's, she's struggling right now between like 12 to 14, 12, 13, 14. Sometimes she gets it, sometimes she doesn't. She loves to count. She loves ABCs. She started singing Twinkle Twinkle all the way through recently. So that's sort of um, what her development is. I made notes to my phone. But um, if I do forget anything, check the description box below because as I edit, sometimes I'll think of other things that come up. First, I want to talk about when she was a baby. Um, I didn't get the point of reading books to her. I think like five, six, seven months. It's hard to remember. Sometime around then, she showed an interest in books. But like I would read her a book and I'm like, why am I reading this baby a book? I don't get it. But what I did do and what I have learned is, like I said, we did attachment parenting. So she was very connected to me. And um, I did a lot of FaceTime like at her level as a baby. And anytime she would make any coos or ahs or oohs, I would copy them. a nighttime routine with her every night I have sung twinkle twinkle to her I'm sure every day of her life so that's one of the reasons she probably knows it uh, <laughs> oh, I wonder what you are up so I did not read a lot of books but what I did do is I talked a lot and I narrated everything as a baby and whenever I would pick her up or put her down, I would always say like one, two, three, kind of as a guide to know that, you know, what's coming so she knew what to expect as a baby. I never did baby talk. I'm sure I did at some point, but I would just talk to her in full sentences as if I was talking to anyone else. Unless I'm like, oh my God, you're so cute. I'm sure I said that a lot. So when she was a baby, I heard that just having the TV on is just so bad for them. So I rarely had the TV on, and so what I would do, and I'm home a lot by myself, so I played music. We have an Alexa like in almost every room. So I would always play a lot of music when she was a baby. One of her favorites was Super Simple Songs, and that's what it is, and it's rhyming songs, and, you know, if, like, songs 
and rhyming songs you just it somehow just absorbs into your mind easier so um, the one song one little finger and she was really young and she was putting one little finger up um, to that song that was like one of her favorites when she was a baby one little finger tap 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 put your finger up put your finger down Give it to your kitty. Give it to kitty. Um, I got sick of super simple songs, so I started playing um, Disney movie soundtracks. Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> Is that your favorite song? Musicals, Les Mis, Evita, things like that. Um, sound and music soundtrack. So um, we always had music on, and I think that's a big part of language de development is hearing the rhyming songs even as a baby the other thing for like in the baby stage is um real picture books a lot of them they're hard to find but babies or at least my daughter loved books with actual pictures then in them of real people and real routines and real animals and things like that like the first 100 words i think that's the book um, I'll put all the all of my favorite books I will link below of things that I think really helped her with language development um, and also counting. There's a lot of her books that really um, have helped her with counting. Stack the Cats. I hated that book. It really taught her how to count. This is one I just recently found. It's the National Geographic Kids Look and Learn. I think I have four or five of these and I try to order one like every two weeks. They have a good amount of them. But they have real pictures in them of people and I mean she just absorbs it and takes it all in and loves it. But the first 100 words book um, pretty early on, I think like, when did she, it's hard to remember, but I think maybe around like nine or 10 months, she started pointing and grunting. So I would like let her lead. Cause honestly, I found it so annoying just to go through and name all the things like a puppy, you know, it's just annoying. So I would hold the book and she actually learned to turn the page and then she would go, uh, uh, and then I would say what it is. So she got the chance to point to what interests her and then, you know, I would name it. Um, it seemed to work really well and she was really absorbing it. Her first word was mama and she was seven months old. Mama? 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 mama. Yeah. So I think that's all for the baby sage. She, I mean, I think the biggest thing is that they want to copy you and they want to be connected to you and they're going to learn from you. They're not going to learn from a stuffed animal that sings songs. They're going to learn from you singing songs. They want to do everything you do and they just want to copy you. Um, I guess one other thing is, and I don't know when we started using them, maybe it was when she was around a year old, but for the alphabet and language, it was the foam bath letters and numbers in the bath. Where's the D? That's right. Where's the T? X was her first letter and she thought every letter was an X and she would see like an exit sign and say X. She would see a grout line in a tile and say X. Like everything was the letter X and then everything was the color yellow. 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 So whenever she was showing interest in a word, I would try to find a song. So Coldplay Yellow when she loved yellow and then X's and the uh, uh, O's, that song. Um... So anything like that, it just to sort of reinforce um, what they're leading you on. And speaking of leading, so I cannot talk about language development without, let me grab the book, without Montessori. And I feel like, like with baby led weaning and Montessori, people think you have to do an all or nothing approach to it. And I incorporate Montessori as much as I can. I'm not a purist. We go to Disney. I love Disney. She knows Mickey. <laughs> like, I understand they have this principle of, you know, you want to show real things and not fantasy because they have such an absorbent mind in this time period until they're three years old. And you really want to show them real things because if you're showing them fantasy, then they think like Mickey and Minnie are actually real, which I mean, she has met them. But I 
I think even if you don't want to do Montessori and you aren't interested, reading this book, Montessori Toddler by Simone Davies or any other books about Montessori, um, just to have some principles to guide you because it's really a course on human development and some things that I've taken away from it. I'm, I've taken away so much because it, and you learn the more you get into it and the more you use it practically with your children, um, it evolves. So two of the principles I think are the most important to me from Montessori is the is the prepared environment and the prepared adult. I think that's what they call them. With Montessori, everything is child-led. And I discovered Montessori about 15 months when she started having a language explosion. But when you let the child lead and you follow their lead, um, there's no teaching. It's all, It's just you're their guide and you are there to guide them and help them if they need it and just observe and see what interests them. Because whatever interests them, they're going to be most excited to learn about. And so I discovered Montessori and it helped me um, understand that better. And also like getting outside is important and practical life is important. And all of those things were so crucial, critical in language development. So the environment. So they, you know, Landon just wanted to learn like what are these things around her. So one of her earliest things like she was talking about was fruit and food and we would, as we washed her hands at the sink, the fruit was over there and I would take the fruit over and that's the other thing you learn is like they learn through sensory and concrete items the best. Um, so I would give her a lemon, I would give her a lime, she would throw them in the sink, apple, banana. Bing. Avocado? Avocado? Mandarin, that's right. We're getting so close. And then I realized um, she was starting to say them, so I made a tray for her and her playroom of all the fruit. And we talked about colors and the different fruit. And then some of her first words during that period, and ones that she just exploded with, we would go on walks twice a day, and it was the fall time, it was still nice. And she just would. I mean, it was amazing, like stick, rock, bamboo, we have a Buddha in our Zen garden, Buddha, like anything outside, bird, sky, airplane. Le Leaves. A lot of the words she knows is from I our walk. Like she knows airplane, airplane, bird, and she knows stick, 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 bamboo, 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 hi pumpkin. Whatever they're interested in, she loves walks outside. That's what they're going to want to name in their environment. I just realized I didn't say this. So we are down in the basement <laughs> because um, our kitchen's being remodeled. So like everything's kind of a mess right now. One of the things that my daughter really um, wanted to learn and say was um, things within her routine, like brushing her teeth. So that's another some more words that she sort of took to right away because she wanted to name like what was going on in her daily routine. Some of the practical things I learned from the Montessori way is to don't question them or quiz them on things unless you know for sure they know the answer. And if they don't know the answer, don't correct them. So you want them to be able intrinsic intrinsically inside to want to learn and to be motivated to learn because they love it and that goes back to a child-led philosophy so if you let them lead and whatever they're interested in at their own pace then they're going to be more motivated to learn and they're going to enjoy it and that's what you want to do like you want to create a fun environment for eating for learning for everything because kids at this age they're little sponges 
and they are learning, like learning should be fun. <laughs> learning should always be fun. <laughs> right now it should be fun at my age, but learning should definitely be fun for these small little babies. And cause otherwise you're just like shooting down their confidence and like you just want them to like look at the world with wonder and take it in and be excited to name these things and explore these things and touch these things. Here are my tips, um, just like quick tips I did that I could remember um, throughout, I would say the past eight months. Um, so I sounded out words to her, so I don't know, is that hooked on, I don't even know if it's hooked on phonics or what it is, but like for ball, I would go ba 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 ball. Um, so you just over pronounce pronunciate the letter like cat c -c 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 cat chair ch -ch 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 chair so I did that a lot right before her language explosion when she was really interested in words and she was like watching my mouth and during that time I remember she would say a word and like her little eyes would light up and she would smile slowly and she like she would just be so proud of herself and it was just like ah oh, you're just so cute. Oh, I said the foam letters in the bath, that was really good. And then the, also paint in the bath with the colors. So we would talk about colors. And then she has an easel. This girl could color all day. So um, we make shapes, just very simple things on the easel we color. Stars, I'll do like one apple, two bananas, and draw out the two bananas, things like that. Um, books. So, I mean, like since five, six months, books, 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 books with real pictures. Well done, Landon. Good counting. So any walks outside in nature or um, going to aquariums, zoos. I took her to PetSmart the other day and it was like a mini zoo and she had the best time. Um, we saw fish, turtles, frogs, birds, kitty cats, dogs, so, um, and she was talking up a storm. You know she's excited when she's talking up a storm. Um, even at, I mean, every opportunity is a learning experience for them because everything is so new and so exciting and so immersive. So at the grocery store, um, or Target, we I go slow and I talk a lot about new fruits or um, she'll count items on a shelf. She helped mommy find apple, cider, vinegar. The apple. Cider. Mm. Vinegar. That is it. Are you counting on? Go ahead, count. Or she'll see something and she'll be like, oh, they're stacked up. And so I'll take my time and if she shows any interest, we'll talk about it. And I'll show it to her and she loves it. She loves the little schleg animals and language cards. And I'll show you this real quick. This is a Montessori thing. She can match up the animal to the card and she loves this. And when she learns an animal, she never forgets like a word. That's a lion. A deer. A deer. A deer runs in the woods. Deer runs in the woods, yeah. It in a lion. It's a lion. Yeah, you matched them. Good job. Um, she loves this book by the National Geographic about butterflies, so I try to do as much, once she shows an interest in something, I try to do as much as I can. So I got a butterfly house, I got butterfly stickers, I got her a butterfly shirt. Um, this, she, I found these at the library, and they are zoo with actual um, pictures inside of the zoo animals, and she got completely obsessed with these. She loves flamingos now and rhinoceroses and um, we, she talks about them almost every day. So just like reading, I feel like our bedtime routine really has impacted her language. And some things that we do is that, like I said, I've always sung Twinkle Twinkle to her since she was 
born, I think. And then I realized Ba Ba Black Sheep and ABCs are the same um, tune to Twinkle Twinkle. So I have sung those three songs, I think maybe since she was like 10 months or somewhere around then. So um, she fully sings ABCs now, even like the words at the end. It's so amazing. Yay! A, B, C, D, F. So amazing. And then we review our day as well. So I'll be like, you know, so you woke up and we had oatmeal and we said goodbye to daddy and daddy got on his red car and I'll make like an engine sound, beep, beep, and he went to work. And then I go through our whole routine that we did that morning and then at night, that afternoon and night. And she just, you know, when she is really interested in something, she gets really quiet. For a while, I thought it was like she was bored. No, no, no. She is like absorbing it intently with so much concentration. So um, those things, and it's funny because when I see her do that now, it's usually she'll remember it. Like the next day or something, she'll like say it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how... Like, you're amazing. Speaking of amazing, she is up. <laughs> so check out the description box below for any other tips I think of later, links to books, and then I'll try to put in some clips of her um, talking and anything I can find in the past of, um, like over the past year, like her talking. Well, thank you for watching, guys, and if you like videos like this, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> 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 you just farted. <laughs> what do you see? Oh, you see Chester. You see Kitty. <laughs> Go, Linda, go. Go, Linda, go. Brandon, who do you have? Dad. <laughs> oh. Can you say hi? <laughs> hi. Hey. Good job. Can you say uh-oh? Uh-oh. Hi. Hi. Shake, shake, shake. Sunshine. Sunshine. L? L. L. Good job. L. L. Yeah, for Landon. Landon. L. L. Halloween. 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 Happy sunshine. You are my. Sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy. <laughs> Go little star, star. How I wonder what you up above the world so. Like a diamond in the high sky. Spicy. <laughs> it's spicy. It's spicy. <laughs> spicy. It's spicy. <laughs> spicy. It's spicy. Do you see the mandarin? There's the mandarin. Do you see the lemon? And the lime.
to Aberdeen do Burkuku. It does look like a pumpkin. That's right, three pea pods. What's next? Look at this. What is that? Yeah, apples. Yeah, apples. You want to count them? Yeah. What color are the fishy? Yellow, 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 blue, 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 berries. In the box. Yeah, blue blocks. Can you get your lucky three sticks? Yeah, three sticks. Three sticks. Big sticks. Small sticks. Big rock. That is a big rock, Landon. That's a small rock, that's right. Come on. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. That's called a shadow. I shadow? I shadow. That's right, it's a new word. And a boot. And the birds were flying in the sky. That's right. One. Eleven. Twelve. Fifteen. Sixteen. A, C, D, E, F, G, E, K, 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 Q, N, I, S, T, W, X, Y, Z. Now, B, N, M, I, A, B, C, so what do you say with? Sing with me, little shy version of it.